up everyone today you are going to be witnessing Joyce Meng and I conduct a profiling session on Eric now this is a profiling session that was done a few months ago um, and we're finally uploading it so as this profiling session is premiering if you're watching the premiere live right now then there's a live chat on the side and you can be talking Eric might be in there um, and you can even ask him a few questions and his session his type will not be revealed until pretty much the very end. Now, throughout this profiling session, the point of us posting this is for you to understand this personality type a lot more and to be able to understand how, more of our process on figuring out how a personality type can come out and how to figure out what a person type, personality type might be like in real life and not just based off of what we read or even just what we watch on YouTube coincidentally. If you're watching post premiere, then the live chat should still be on the side if you want to go ahead and continue to keep up with that. But yeah, all in all, let's see if you're able to figure out what personality type Eric is by the end. And even if you're not able to figure it out, hopefully this is a learning process or a learning experience for you to be able to further figure out like, oh, so this is how this type can show up and maybe even help you with being able to profile or just passively type people in your own everyday life. And if any of you want a profiling session from just me or from Joyce or from us both, then be sure to check out Joyce's channel for her link to her profiling sessions. Be sure to check out the description below for my profiling sessions. And also be sure to check out our joint YouTube channel, The Knife Show, um, where Joyce and I dissect the human psyche and society. All right, y'all enjoy. What do you love to do so much? And I mean, you love to do this so much, you could do it indefinitely until you're exhausted because it gives you energy. Uh, I mean, um, I guess I could probably say that about uh, my, uh, my career, um, which is uh, software development. Um, so for a long time, it used to be kind of more of a hobby. And now for that, it became uh, and I worked really hard for it to become a, a career. And after that, it finally became a career. So it was finally cool to be, actually be able to do that all day um, and actually get paid for it. So that was a lot of fun. Um, also, um, yeah, uh, if it's just one, one thing, then but that's definitely it. Oh, you can say as many things as you want. These are more like conversational prompt questions. So they're not meant for you to have a one specific answer. They're more of expand in whatever way you want because we just want you okay. to open up about yourself. So okay. they're like icebreaker questions. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and I mean, the other thing would be, I guess, uh, uh, things related to music. Um, I'm not exactly a musician. I learned that uh, when I was younger and, uh, you know, I tried to learn guitar and everything and I wasn't actually able to play as well as I would have liked because of that I ended up uh, uh, going down more of the route of kind of like the, the business aspect of it. So, um, you know, first as a concert promoter uh, doing um, you know, like promoting maybe 20 shows or anything or something like that. And after that, uh, I did a little bit of, of artist management uh, where I helped out one of my friend's bands and I really enjoyed uh, kind of um, that aspect of it, even though it was very short lived. Um, if I would probably, uh, if I'd have another opportunity, I'd definitely probably do it again. Um, and after that, I was running a website uh, promoting the uh, uh, metal music uh, for for four years, and I really liked doing that. Kind of like just just to be able to promote uh, the music to kind of like the the Ottawa area. And then after that, um, after that, uh, for about ten years, I was DJing, doing industrial music, and uh, or pretty much like. Uh, EBM and and, and synth pop. So, and uh, it really got me out of my comfort zone, uh, where I'm pretty shy person and introverted, and I can 
tend to feel social, uh, social, uh, socially anxious in, in social settings. It's because of that, uh, it really helped me, uh, like even though I was like really nervous and really anxious doing it sometimes, um, it just the, like sometimes the, 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 the results outweighed the, the, like, even though I was uncomfortable. So, so yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I am a very uh, socially anxious, shy individual. So I, I understand <laughs> the struggle there. <laughs> <laughs> what other things uh, light you up? Are there more things or are those like the main things? Uh, it's in general, those are the things that I'm the most passionate about uh, in general. Um, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. So being a DJ, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's really cool. Do you have any YouTube channels or Instagram pages with your work? No, um, well, I mean, um, being kind of shy and I wasn't really too sure how to, to kind of like promote that aspect um, other than maybe doing a podcast and doing a radio show on, on CKCU, which is, uh, the, the radio station at Carleton University. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, uh, I guess, um, kind of like doing uh, my own promotion. Um, so I always, try, uh, I didn't necessarily really d dive deep into uh, promoting myself through social media other than trying to, uh, through my, my Facebook page at the time and, uh, and Twitter but I wasn't very successful at it. Um, and yeah, like my Facebook page, since I haven't been DJing in a couple of years, I think that uh, like I took it down and, uh, but you can also, uh, but you can still see my, my podcast, which is on Apple podcasts and it's Positronic radio. Mm -hmm. so. What is your mm -hmm. DJ name? Uh, it's uh, DJ Reverie. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm just writing it down if I ever check okay. it later. Yes. <laughs> so Eric, I am wondering, what do you pay attention to when you, uh, you create music, right? Or you like, remix? no, no, uh, I just play other people's music. Mm, so okay. um, I'll, I'll kind of like make uh, mixes of like, you know, like 10, 12 songs and kind of put them in 60 minute uh, mixes. And that's generally what I do for, for my podcast, but in a club setting, I'll kind of like just play other people's music, so. Interesting, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so Eric, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. how would people who've known you for a long time describe you, even if you do not disagree with it? I mean, sorry, you do, you, you, <laughs> if you disagree uh, with it. <laughs> um, uh, other people would say that I'm, uh, I can be pretty direct and blunt in the way that I communicate, uh, even though it's not what I mean. And people who know me generally know that. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just kind of like my writing style. And also uh, some people have uh, told me that uh, uh, I'm a very nice person. Um, and uh, Um, in the past, uh, especially when it came to music, especially in my early twenties, um, I would be very opinionated about music and because of that, uh, uh, like not my close friends, but like, I, I, have heard the term thrown around as, uh, because I was very opinionated with music, uh, like a music Nazi. So, so, uh, but, uh, uh, I've toned down quite a lot since then, um, especially like at, as I matured and that was in my early twenties and now I'm in my late thirties. So, so yeah, I've grown considerably since then. Uh, and uh, so what was the, the original question? Sorry. 
Yeah, so my original question was, um, how do people describe you who've known you for quite some time, even if you do not agree? Okay. Uh, um, I guess, uh, I mean, I agree to, to a certain point. Um, I'm consistently late all the time. <laughs> um, I'm um, generally because I'm kind of like doing my own thing. And after that, I tend to not really see the time. And next thing I know, I see the time enough that I start to kind of like hurrying to, to go and, and do whatever I need to do. So, uh, but other than that, um, uh, pretty quiet. Um, uh, I mean, my parents have kind of like while growing up, they, they always told me that I should go outside <laughs> um, because I was always inside uh, on the computer. Um, and you know, for that, uh, just um, I'm not. Uh, it's like a my mom always complains that I never call her <laughs> it's because of that. Uh, uh, I don't like. I know why she wants me to call. It's just I don't really like talking on the phone. <laughs> And I guess uh, it, it probably has to do with the fact that I grew up with a stutter and just the, the idea of being on the phone, especially for some odd reason, my stutter seems to be worse when I speak on the phone. So yeah, that's generally one of the things. Uh -huh. uh, yep. Sometimes I stutter when I do videos. So what I do is I just pre-record them. So if I do stutter, I can just cut out the stutter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I hardcore feel you there. I'm wondering, Eric, mm -hmm. how do you describe yourself after, you know, describing how other people may be seeing you and have seen you? What is an Eric? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, an Eric is essentially a person that likes to, uh, um, I like being alone. Um, and like, I like being around other people. Uh, but I do like to have my, my alone time and kind of do the things that I like doing. Um, and I mean, um, how can, uh, I, when, uh, uh, I guess the, the, the way that I kind of see myself is, uh, like, a computer nerd um, that uh, I like um, sorry now that we're doing this like I'm completely forgetting everything so it's probably no. my, my my nervousness so <laughs> no worries uh, I'm a really friendly person and I'm awkward so like if it'll give you any solace you can never be more awkward than I am so um I think uh, it's, it's like um, I I try to be a nice person and a good person to others, uh, but um, like uh, but I tend to like I've had different uh i guess phases in my life like there was like the phase where i was kind of trying to switch careers where um i was very focused on my on kind of like switching uh my career and kind of like focusing my attention on learning as much as i could about uh you know programming and about uh about uh um in order to, to uh Um, um, uh, sorry, I'm 
kind of uh, losing my, my train of thought as I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. So, uh, so, um, so for example, we're, uh, Um, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm I'm answering the right question that, that I think. Can you repeat the question just in case? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the questions, um, you can answer them however you want, and it's okay, okay. if you veer off the questions. Yeah. They're to kind of get you thinking and to get you to talk about yourself. So however you answer it, as long as it's true to you, like it really doesn't matter what way you go about answering it. <laughs> if that takes off okay. the pressure, I'm trying to like take off the pressure. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, um, growing up, uh, okay, well, right now, um, it's kind of like a transitional period in my life where, um, I was, uh, I, I'm married and I, I'm just going through a separation right now because of that kind of trying to figure out, uh, who I am and, uh, where I kind of fit in all of this uh, and all of, uh, my life and everything, especially since uh, I focused so much, so, so much of my my last couple of years on uh, on my career and kind of you know doing that transition, um, you know, or uh, like during the during the time that I was doing all the music stuff, you know, like. Uh, um, I got so busy with that that I didn't necessarily have the time to think about anything else. Um, and then for that, kind of now I'm in a good place in my life where my career is good. Uh, you know, I, I've achieved a lot of the goals that I kind of set for myself because of that. Um, I'm kind of and I guess that's where I kind of started looking at, uh, you know, personality types, trying to figure out, you know, what, what my type was. And um, in order to kind of better understand, uh, you know, who I am, uh, kind of like how my, my mind works, um, how, you know, I relate to other people and, um, Um, and, but, um, but yeah, like, uh, before that, when it came to, to music stuff, like I, I became so obsessed with, uh, trying to promote the music that I, uh, that I like, um, you know, in, in different ways, whether that, that was, you know, like promoting concerts, promoting my own DJ events, uh, you know, doing radio shows, doing podcast and everything and the, the goal was always to kind of promote the music that I loved in order to find people that would actually listen to it uh, and I guess the reason why is because uh, when I got introduced to the music that I DJed uh, I was living in Toronto for uh, under a year and uh, it took me like a really long time to, to meet people, but I, I started going out to, to, uh, to clubs that, that played the, the specific music that I, that I played. And, uh, it, it, it's kind of like during that period of time, like it had brought a lot of happiness to me because of that. And I kind of dove into the, 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 the music and, and really started, uh, you know, especially when I moved back to Ottawa, just because nobody else was playing that type of music. And I felt that like, since I had already started DJing while in Toronto, um, like uh, like nobody else was doing it because of that, you know, I, I thought to myself, hey, I could actually start uh, promoting this kind of music and hopefully people like it and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the, the goal was never to really to, to make money uh, because I mean, it was never my my like uh, like my career path or anything like that. It was more of a passion project, and really wanted to to uh, uh, you know, it, it made me so happy and kind of like how it made me uh, feel that you know I wanted other people to also experience that.
which um, and and I mean that's more the 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 the, the musical aspect. Uh, the programming aspect was kind of to try to get my life back in order because I felt that when I graduated from high school, I decided to go and take cybersecurity, which at the time felt like a good idea. But I think that in the, 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 like it didn't exactly fit where I saw myself, you know, like when I was young, like in eighth grade, you know, uh, people would ask me, you know, what I wanted to do later on as a career. And I had to mention, you know, like I'd like to be a programmer. So, um, and the more and more that I was doing, like, uh, like, you know, I did cybersecurity at school and after that, uh, I didn't necessarily like it. And after that, the first job that I could get that was tech related was uh, technical support. Um, and after that, during that time that I was doing technical support, I was always doing stuff on the side to try to move to, to software development, even though I probably took way longer than it should have had, but you know, people make, deci uh, make decisions and sometimes it's not the, the greatest decisions and you just have to live with it. So, um, and I guess, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, like at one point I was, uh, working full-time at the RCMP and enough of that, uh, like doing school part-time, DJing part-time. Uh, at one point, I also added a company that I was uh, that, uh, that was starting at the same time. So I kept myself really busy, probably way too busy. And I think that that's kind of why now that I don't necessarily have that, I'm kind of just wondering, it's like, what do I do with my time? And kind of like, I don't really, haven't really found my next passion, which is kind of strange just because I've always been kind of, uh, I've never had that part of my life where I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I don't, I don't know. Like, because right now, uh, you know, there, there's the thing with separation, but also at the same time, uh, stuff with, uh, I guess, with, with, with my career. So, so some aspects are good, some aspects aren't, but I don't know. Uh, does that answer somewhat the question? <laughs> yeah, definitely. All answers yeah. are good answers. So, <laughs> yeah, Denzel, do you have anywhere you'd like to take the conversation? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I want to ask actually, how mm -hmm. are you when it comes to like being like really like organized and planned and stuff like that? Like, are you more of like a uh, no, just go as the go with the flow type of person or would you say that you are like someone who's like no I'm pretty organized I'm pretty planned I mean I know that you just spoke about like how like usually you have a passion that you're pursuing and stuff mm -hmm. like that um but aside from that like you know in your everyday life like would you say like no my space is like pretty clean and tidy and, <laughs> and timely and stuff like that or it's like uh yeah um so when it comes to to, to my outside i guess uh kind of like uh, you know like my desk uh i think i'm definitely the type of person that when i dive into something i tend to forget about everything in the background mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so uh the, the outside is never necessarily organized mm -hmm. i guess inside my mind is a lot more organized makes sense um when I make plans, uh, when it comes to like, you know, like working on something, I generally have a plan in my head, but mm -hmm. never anything that I kind of uh, write down, you know, on a piece of paper or like, I'm not exactly the type of person to, to, uh, you know, have to do lists and all that kind of stuff, which Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been trying more and more to do that because it's, it's helping me kind of uh, better organize my thoughts and better organize what I should be doing and kind of uh, instead of everything just being in my head. So yeah, I think that's definitely a growth path that I wanna take mm -hmm. where it's like to be better organized, but generally, historically, I haven't been that well organized. Got you, no, that's yeah. very helpful. Um, how would you describe how you were like as a child? Like you said that you were always on a computer and your mom was like, go play outside and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, what else? Could you um, 
that? I mean, um, as a kid, uh, I remember uh, my parents saying that that the teachers thought that I was arrogant because <laughs> uh, because of the fact that I guess I was strongly opinionated about like um, really silly things, like for example, the way that that my first grade teacher uh, said a phrase in French that I I disagreed with, and I and I thought that you know it should should be said this way, <laughs> you know, like 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 uh, silly things like that. Um, and after that, you know, uh, like I started going on the computer and, um, I guess people, uh, one thing that I should have probably indicated earlier about like things that people know me that is that, uh, they've always known me as, as someone that's been very good with, with computers and that's able to figure out stuff really fast and a very fast learner um so i was like eight and like uh my dad would try to figure out how to like install this operating system and after that i was like no it's not this way it's this way and you know and i guess yeah like eight or nine <laughs> or like uh uh which oh yeah uh, no, that that makes <laughs> sense but it's like like uh um i guess at the time like uh, it's not that I really read the manual. It's just uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it. So of course you don't. <laughs> that's that's just a gift. That's just a gift. Like yeah, no, I just I just was able to figure it out. You know. Yeah. That yeah, that makes total sense. Um, to me, you strike me as the type of person who's good with his hands. Is that would you say that's correct? Uh, hands. Um, uh, I mean, when it comes, uh, not really with my hands, more kind of like, uh, like, I guess more grit that, that, that relates, mm -hmm. uh, that, um, what's the word? Um, I, I can relate with that more, like, uh, I guess. When I was young, I guess, I, uh, you know, like I wanted to put together a computer, mm -hmm. but later on it became more of like more software than it was hardware. I don't know how, how else to explain it and if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Mm. That makes sense. Um, okay. I My question for you now is, would you say they are somebody who's usually present minded um, or even if you feel like you're not, you're aware of your surroundings to an extent, or would you say that you're usually not really like present? Like you, you feel like you're not really, <clears throat> it's hard for you to be present like in the moment. Mm, um, I think it depends. Um, I think that I'm generally maybe kind of like in my own little world, even when I'm watching a show for, uh, for example, sometimes I'm like focusing on, on like what's in my head versus the show. And after that, sometimes I kind of miss what they say. And because of that, I end up kind of like missing some parts of like, uh, of what's said, even kind of like growing up and even today to a certain point, like somebody will say something and, uh, I'll get them to repeat and after that, as they go to repeat, I actually heard what they said. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but, uh, so, yeah. And for the last little while, um, like, I guess, uh, like what I call during my, my transition phase, uh, it's kind of like I've been kind of like focused on interests and just kind of like just watching video for, to video to video to video to video and kind of like losing track of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I have two more questions. Okay. Um, but everything seems to be tracking. I just want to make sure now. <clears throat> what are some of these opinions that you have? I, like, uh, yeah, I want to know. 
like even even if they even if they might make us go <gasps> like I would like we won't judge you promise um like I guess uh like back in the day um and you kind of see that a lot with people that really get into uh music genres like like uh like metal where you kind of get introduced to bands and you love it so much that you kind of can't understand why other people can't love it the same way as you do. If that makes sense. And after that, you kind of um, even kind of like bands that 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 you really like and other people don't like. And after that, you're like, why can't you like this? Just like it doesn't make <laughs> sense in, in the mind. Like it, it, it's, it's kind of like the, I guess my go-to example that I can think of. But like other things, like um, you know, in, in my career uh, right now, kind of like I started at uh, at at the company that I'm working at earlier this year, and one of the things that I, that that I couldn't believe when I got there was that um, you know. Uh, there's this concept called uh, called unit testing that I think uh, that, that I wrote about in my my questionnaire and kind of like how uh, people weren't weren't writing uh, tests on the front end and the front end is basically like what you see like you know like like when you go on an application or whatever um, and basically what unit tests are is that like say for example you'll write uh, a line of code. Enough that you want to make sure that that line of code does exactly what you want it to do. So you write unit tests, and that way, uh, you know, re regardless what happens, you're always going to get the same result. Which means that that there's uh, it, it reduces the chance of there being bugs. Okay, mm -hmm. so so because of that, you know, I kind of couldn't believe in, and even though a lot of other people, you know, we're deciding not to 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 write those tests like i kind of like tried to really push the idea of like you know hey maybe we should be writing tests and kind of like and not only saying but also at the same time uh kind of like uh you know all the work that i was doing always included all the tests and kind of like it i guess encouraged other people to also write tests and also uh, I even got some feedback from other people saying it's like, hey, hey, I really like those tests that 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 you wrote and all that stuff. So mm. um and kind of like uh um I don't know. Um I guess uh, other things like like for example politics, uh like I uh really interested in politics. And I, I, I consider myself uh, a centrist, but kind of like leaning towards the left um, and kind of like, uh, so for example, I'll be in the discussion with my parents about uh, politics, like, like even in regards to stuff like teachers and like I have strong opinions about, you know, the fact that teachers uh, should be paid well because of the fact that they form kind of like the the, the you know uh future they, they essentially uh it's like that for uh and in, in french it's formation but just like uh it's kind of like the the formation of like you know the future kids and like um and you know that's why it's important to to, to pay them well, just because you know you look at the value that they bring versus, uh, you know, and it's kind of like even why, like in tech companies, uh, software developers usually get paid more because of the value they bring to the company. So it's just kind of like that, the same reasoning as that. As that so, got you. Yeah, no, that makes again makes total sense. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, my final question for you right now then is okay. what would be something that you say that you would say is obvious to a lot of other people, but seems to always go over your head. Like, how do I keep on missing stuff like this? And then the reverse, something that's usually obvious to you, but not usually <laughs> obvious to other people. And it's like, how do people not see this? <laughs> mm. um, well, I think that in my 
uh, marriage that I'm currently separated. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I've had, um, I, I've struggled a lot with uh, being able to, uh, I guess, like my, uh, my wife uh, uh, is definitely more of a feeler and the way that she reacts to things it, it is like, um, I struggle sometimes understanding why she reacts the way that, 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 that she does, mm -hmm. um, because to me, it just doesn't make logical sense. And, and I guess it's, it's kind of like, uh, even when, when she has like a strong emotional reaction, um, I tend to kind of, uh, sh like the way that I react uh, she says that I'm kind of like a robot um, uh, because I essentially kind of like either have a delayed reaction to uh, to, to emotions or I um, or I become completely unemotional and uh, but yeah uh, things that are obvious to me <laughs> Um, she's, like, she's watching a show. Sorry. Okay. She's not my <laughs> <That's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, things that are obvious to me, uh, um, the only thing that, 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 that that comes to mind, um, and it's probably not a very good example, but uh, I'm just gonna give it. Um, is that like uh, um, my wife asks me why I always have the same thing for breakfast, and I tell her the reason why I have the same thing for breakfast is because I don't have to think about it, which means that it's 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 one less thing to worry about in my life. <laughs> um, and to me, it's obvious just because, you know, you make that decision and you don't have to think about it anymore. And for other people, it's just kind of like, why not? You know, you can have this or you can have that. It's just like, if, if I always worried about that kind of stuff, then I wouldn't have time for other things. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> no. Apparently, a lot of geniuses and like people who are rich and stuff like that, they, that's what they do with like clothes. Like they mm -hmm. just kind of like wear like similar clothing like every day or mm -hmm. um like i know like my wife she actually has like uh a whole like uh mm -hmm. how do i even call it like it's like a routine like she'll say mm -hmm. things like well today is my day to wear this denzel so like if i'm gonna get dirty then i can't you know and it's like she can't break out of that um and she's mm -hmm. a perceiver she's an isfp so I, mm -hmm. I think that's interesting too like me, mm -hmm. I, I can't do that. I'm a judger. I'm an ENFJ. And yet for me, mm -hmm. it's like, nah, I have to match like what the day is calling for. Mm -hmm. um, and But I do see how like thinking about that has gotten to me. And so now I've even gotten to a point where it's like, you know what? I have like about 12 different polo shirts and V-necks. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just pick whichever one I want to wear for that day. And I'm like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas, you know, like going through an actual like routine, but yeah, apparently like that's a big thing that they said that rich people do like Obama and a whole bunch of other people. Cause then it's like, they have to make your brain has enough, like your brain has a certain limit of how many decisions it can make, so it can make a day or something like that. Um, and when you have like wasted it already in the morning, like, oh, what do I, might what am I going to wear? Oh, now what am I going to eat? uh this is that and it's like by the time that is nighttime then it's like of course you're just making like very sloppy decisions and mm. rich people they don't have time for that they're like i have much more important things to worry about um mm -hmm. so they're not gonna like try to you know think so much about what they're wearing or like you know whatever mm. it might be because yeah so i always found that concept to be like very interesting i learned about it like a few years ago i was like whoa that makes sense like, they were like showing like all these examples of like how obama like always wears like the same tie 
or some they were like giving like all these different examples steve yeah. jobs he like pretty much just always wore like a black shirt or something like that too um and yeah you just don't have to think about it and now you have me thinking too like maybe i should just do the same thing with like breakfast too like <laughs> in the morning and it's just like you know my first thought was like oh but what if i'm tired of eating that but at the same time it's like i think that i'd be okay <laughs> like just yeah. Satisfy your stomach so that you can actually do the things that you want to do. Like breakfast is not really something to necessarily enjoy anyway. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just something to like make sure that you don't die until you, so you can. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Well, all of that said, um, and mm -hmm. thanks by the way for uh, mm -hmm. bringing up your relationship with your yeah. uh, wife and everything because I. I mm -hmm. I was curious about that. Like, I wanted to ask a little bit, not in like a nosy way, but I had like mm -hmm. theories. Because if you're the type that I think that you are, then I was thinking like, okay, I wonder if this plays a part. Because I've also seen like a certain pattern. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of confirmed it without me having to ask, and I was like, all right. And the good news from that is that once again, like, if you're the type that I think that you are, it's mm -hmm. not entirely your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. It's like, oh man, you you're kind of at a disadvantage when it comes to relationships, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's still hope and yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, there's that. But anyway, yeah, so I think that I'm pretty solid on what type that I think that you are. I don't know, Joyce, are you? Yeah, I'm pretty solid. Yeah, I have one type in mind. Okay. Um, if I was like laughing, it was because um I can hear family members in the background chasing my cats, and I'm like, what That's are you guys doing? <laughs> um, yeah, and I was reading your questionnaire, Eric, and <laughs> in your questionnaire, you talked about some really interesting things. It's actually very in in line with your personality type <laughs> it's like it's like uh, very very in line and you also live really close to me by the way you're in mm. ottawa right now and i'm i i live near toronto so i'm in mark okay but okay. like on the borderline there there's a really big uh mbti community in toronto okay um, so i mean if you ever wanted to visit you could i mean mm. <laughs> like just well, simple is a really interesting company. That's like what I use yeah. to file my taxes. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's I don't know that small world. <laughs> yeah. Before we uh, tell you what type that we think that you are, and okay. we're writing our down right now, so it won't influence ours. Yeah, I want to ask, what type? What type do you think that we're going to type you as? Slash, mm. what type do you think that you are based off of this session? Okay. Uh. Something tells me. Uh, I mean, based on some of the questions that that you asked, and the the, uh, I thought maybe uh, some of the questions you were kind of that, like especially with like if I was good with my hands, like the part uh, with like ISTP, uh, and I think that that I've tested a lot as INTJ, and I know that it's it's like. A lot of other types usually test as INTJs because of that. Like, there, there are still there, there are some stuff that I relate to it, but I don't necessarily know uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Uh, possibly INTP as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and uh, I'm really not sure. Um, it's basically like yeah, it, it's. Good. Yeah, it's out of those three, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I think that ISTPs give a lot of INTJ energy and vice versa, mm -hmm. um, especially when they're like probably both Enneagram fives at times too. But regardless, mm -hmm. I think they give like very similar energy. And I was okay. thinking about that during the session. I was like, like at the beginning, I was like, hmm. Maybe INTJ, but like we'll see. And there's certain things that we'll go through that will like I'll be able to explain. Like, oh no, I don't think that you're an INTJ. Um, mm -hmm. And in the same way, you know, like ISFPs, they give INFJ energy, in my opinion. 
Um, okay. And, you know, you'd be able to still tell the difference. And sometimes there's a little bit of like overlap, like, you know, ISTP, INFJs, they can have like similar energy, which makes sense because they share the same functions. They're both introverted. ISFPs and INTJs can also give similar energy, like, you know, stuff like that, same functions. So all that being said, mm -hmm. I think that you're an ISTP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think that um, everything that you've described, once again, was like, mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, very stereotype, to be honest. It's like, wow. <laughs> you just kept on hitting the nail on the head with a lot of different things. Um, mm -hmm. Even, like, with DJing and everything, too. Like, uh, I don't know how much, like, you know about Grandmaster Flash, for example. Okay. well, uh, like, 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 I do know about him, but not, okay. like, a, a whole lot. So Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I believe that he was an ISFP, from mm -hmm. what I can understand. And I think that that like like when you when you're DJing like that auxiliary SE. Do you understand cognitive functions? By the way, I'm I'm starting to. I'm I'm trying to learn a lot uh, about them, but I, I'm I don't feel confident to to okay. kind of like use them and like when I explain stuff. So gotcha. Okay, cool. And then I'll I'll know how to like break it down. Like so, the yeah. ISTP they have their second function. Their second strongest function is called extroverted sensing or SE. Mm -hmm. And that's yep. all about like pretty much being in the moment, seeing things empirically for what it is, often mm -hmm. like with their hands, um, being able to hop into action, keeping track of time, stuff like that. And I feel like you're like you being able to, first of all, like your idea of like how you can be present at times, like mm -hmm. especially like I love how you said it's like, you know, sometimes you might think that, oh, I didn't hear that person properly. So you ask them to repeat themselves. And it's like, oh, yeah, I did catch that. Like you were still present enough to like still catch. What was going on but you still mm -hmm. have that ti and i uh yeah. so ti is your dominant function and i is your tertiary function um mm -hmm. of like when when you get into something then you focus and you drill really deeply into it which mm -hmm. to me you didn't strike me as intp because you seem to not really like you when you said at the beginning that you speak in like a very like blunt and like direct way mm -hmm. that also of course like gave me like thinker um like vibes but then mm -hmm. on top of that i wanted to listen throughout this session to see how often like how frequently you wouldn't be able to explain yourself unless if you use some sort of like analogy or metaphor or an allusion to something else and mm -hmm. you you kept it not only are you direct in like you know your speech and like button everything but you're also like, just very concrete and like direct in how you like present a lot of what you say and mm -hmm. so it makes it very clear and simple for people to be able to understand you um, in that sense. And I feel like that's another reason why it's like, oh yeah, then to me, you're not an INTP because INTPs is like, their second function is extroverted intuition. So it's like a lot of times mm -hmm. you can't explain things without extrapolating so many different ideas to be able to explain in that way. But then mm -hmm. also with INTJ, a lot of them, like they aren't able to explain things without like really materializing like something from their introvert intuition then explaining like some sort of like metaphor or analogy or some form like that that will make the conversation a little bit more like abstract and sometimes even harder to follow but for okay. you it's very easy to follow you you speak very 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 like particularly like every time like i'd watch your cadence it's like you're thinking very carefully about each word that you're using mm -hmm. um, i feel like that's another um, indication of like, you know, high stacked introverted thinking, mm -hmm. but not even just with like INTP, but like not, not even just like with, uh, but not even just that, but like also like ISTP, high stack introverted thinking, because you are, again, speaking in a very concrete way, whereas like mm -hmm. an INTP, like they'll like think about what they're saying to an extent, but then their NE is like good at being able to like have like a whole bunch of ideas to play with in that way. Um, okay. And then also, you know, once again, going back to the DJing, like your ability to be present. Mm -hmm. Like when you're DJing, you have to be present. Like you're yeah. vibing to the music, all of that. And the reason why I brought up like Grandmaster Flash is because there's a show on, on Netflix called The Get Down. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so, you, so, you, so you watched all of it. And so you yeah. watched Grandmaster Flash from there too. So yeah. you remember what he did with the crayon. And how yeah. he was like teaching Shaolin. Shaolin, mm -hmm. I believe he was an ESTP. Okay. Um, he was teaching Shaolin, like, remember Grasshopper, like, you know, you have to be able to, like, he said, he, like, there was that one 
moment where they were talking about like timing mm -hmm. um, and everything like that. And he was like, this is how I'm always able to like catch uh, where the get down is and stuff like that. And he was like, cause I know timing. And he like walked away yeah. from the DJ thing. Then he came back and I don't understand the full mechanics of DJing, but like when he <clears> came <throat> back and he caught it at the exact moment where he was supposed to just flip it, that yeah. is high stacked SE. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, whoa, I kept track of the timing so much that I was able mm -hmm. to catch it just like that. And not even just high stacked SE, but then NI as a tertiary function, mm -hmm. it's like, sure, you were able to drift away a little bit for the moment, but you were timing mm -hmm. that perfectly. Like when you have like those two functions in the middle, mm -hmm. then it's 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 what I see as like looking for the precise and perfect timing to, to do something. Um, mm -hmm. So to me, that struck me like it's very like ISP, which once again, okay. I think it's an ISFP, but it's the same middle polarity for you as an ISTP. Okay. Where you're able to keep track of that timing and you know you're already good with it and on top of that you be feeling like you're like pretty opinionated and all of that very mm -hmm. high stacked introverted thinking so i feel yeah. like that's like also something's like this is what you're good at this is your craft so you're just mm -hmm. constantly chiseling away at it and like trying to like perfect it and stuff like that um mm -hmm. and that's your passion that's what you want to continue to go after um yeah. so i feel like that's also something that was really like you know standing out on top of once again stereotypes like you're really good with computers <laughs> like yeah. at the yeah. age of eight or nine <laughs> really good and like yeah i mean I, it's not like i even read the manual or anything <laughs> like added me to, to it's, come off bragging. it's just like no this is just you even said like i, I don't i don't know how to explain it and i'm like yeah, of course you don't because it's just it's just there and that's mm -hmm. the for, like istps like it's really good but something that you probably like, so that's something that probably came very easily to you, but mm -hmm. something that, if I could guess, probably doesn't come very easy to you are relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, why are people responding this way to me? Why are the people mm -hmm. responding this way to each other? Why, why is this? Wait, you're mad? <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like, dang, I'm not really picking up on that. And that's because as an ISTP, if you are mm -hmm. one, then your inferior function is extroverted feeling. Yeah. And extroverted feeling is all about like looking at the interpersonal dynamics and understanding like, oh, okay, this person did that and that made her sad. And this mm -hmm. person did that, that made him mad and boom, boom, boom. And like understanding like how you play into that social arena. And because mm -hmm. it's your, your smallest, your least strong function, then you happen to be like, you either ignore it or you suppress mm -hmm. it or you're just not as competent with it. It does not come as easily to you. So mm -hmm. sometimes, like, you might not value friendships or relationships as much as other people do. Mm -hmm. Or if you do, it's it's harder for you to be able to sustain them, um, especially more than one at a time. Um, yeah. And so with something as, like, you know, deep and intense as, like, a romantic relationship, then, mm -hmm. again, I do not know, of course, like, the ins and outs of how your marriage is like, and I'm not trying to impose anything. Mm -hmm. but from what I've seen from other ISTPs that I know, um, they happen to like like their partners the way that you said that your partner like said that sometimes you can seem like robotic and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately that that just seems to be a thing for them a lot of times and it's like yeah i just don't understand why this is bothering you so much and then they mm -hmm. can probably look at you like i don't understand how you don't understand how it's bothering me <laughs> Yeah. And, and maybe to you, it's like, yeah, I just, I understand computers. That's what I understand. I, yeah. I understand real robots because I'm, you know, that's my brother. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, I feel like that, like, that's like a lot of explanation as to why, you know, I believe that you are an ISTP on top of like, you know, like you're organized in your head, another mm -hmm. thinking thing, but yeah. then you don't really feel the need to check things off a list as an INTJ might would like to. Yeah. Um, and you don't really like even write things down to begin with. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's about everything. Yeah. Does that resonate? Do you feel like yeah. you want to clarify? It's like um like uh like how I found out about you Joyce was through uh, uh watching type talks. Yeah. And uh I think that I guess some of the stuff that uh, I can't remember which talk, which specific talk it was, but something that that Mara had said at one point, and I kind of resonated with, 
And after mm-hmm. that, I was kind of like, hey, wait, like, what if I could be an ISTP? And after that, so now that kind of like, you know, when you mentioned that, it's kind of like, it, it, it makes sense to me. So. Nice. Yeah. When you nice. talk about your delayed emotional reactions, that's not mm-hmm. something INTJs or even ISTJs go through. Because if mm-hmm. your FI is tertiary, you know who mm-hmm. you are, you, you have strong likes and dislikes, and you are aware of your emotion at all times. Mm-hmm. You may not say to other people, but it's always there. Yeah. Whereas the ones with delayed emotional reactions tend to be the ISTP, INTP, and sometimes mm-hmm. even um, ENTJs and ESTJs. So okay. how ENTJs and ESTJs do it is they, they compartmentalize their emotions. They're like, I'm going to put my emotions into this tiny little box and then shove it to the side. That is mm-hmm. more of the inferior FI response, <laughs> whereas mm-hmm. the the ISTP, on the other hand, takes a while to fully register the anger, and it's like, wait, I'm yeah. angry. <laughs> it's like yeah. catches you off guard a little bit, and yeah. Sometimes it can result in like moments like usually you're very calm and level headed, but you'll have moments of volcanoing or rawr, and you won't know where it comes from. And you're like, wow, that was out of character. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like I've had a few fights with my wife where I'm normally pretty uh, like level headed. And after that, at one point, I'll just get get really angry, which I don't like, but it's like it's happened a few times, and and yeah, so. Mm, yeah, that anger is an interesting little thing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and but, like Denzel said, you have a lot of TI traits, so mm-hmm. you say things very blunt and directly. You have strong mm-hmm. opinions. And yeah. you'll, you'll say it and then you'll realize, oh, I accidentally offended some people and that wasn't your intent. And then you just kind of look around you and it's a crime scene. It's like, ooh. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And just the proficiency with computers and your ability to figure it out as you're going is very mm. TI DOM plus SE. So the SE is the part where it's like, I'll just figure it out as I go. And so mm. you're you don't even need to read anything and you're just like whoosh and you made it through the end and you, and you could do things grown adults couldn't so yeah. that's your superpower you have yeah. so many like computer related achievements like on your test you're like i did these things from a young age you programmed a website in eighth grade yeah. like man in eighth grade i i was i was not that cool at anything <laughs> so you have a talent with software so well simple mm-hmm. is happy to have you man like you are yeah the I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but yeah being an engineer is very uh stereotypically ti job like i've met a lot of ti users who are in the field of engineering and mm-hmm. it's because ti is very good at problem solving and okay. there's a nitty-gritty problem solving that is involved in engineering and so mm-hmm. yeah it's pretty cool also, yeah. the social anxiety that you experienced when you were younger and still mm-hmm. now to a certain extent, you know, the the stuttering or the anxiety when, when speaking in front of us. And mm-hmm. it's most common with TI dominant FE inferiors, but especially okay. for the ISTP, I would say. Because okay. like with, with the INTP, they have extroverted mm-hmm. intuition, so they mm-hmm. can still talk a lot. And yeah. the INTPs sometimes talk so much and they're so long-winded, they don't realize when other people are tuning out. Um, <laughs> so they don't struggle with social anxiety as much or they cope with it by over-talking. Whereas mm-hmm. like for you, Eric, you experience social anxiety, mm-hmm. but you actually start to stutter, like you start to get more quiet as you become more socially anxious, mm-hmm. which to me signals more ISTP because it's okay. almost like NI, TI is not good at randomly generating a lot of ideas. Okay. So the more nervous you get, the more actually like stoic and quiet you'll get. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which is more in line with ISTP. And okay. I'm a nervous introvert too, so I understand the struggles. <laughs> 
one of the ways in which I see your FE in mm -hmm. is that like when I smile, you'll smile too. So like, <laughs> the more I smile, you'll do like, <laughs> yeah. Whereas like if I was with an INTJ or an ISTJ, mm -hmm. my emotions would contagious them less. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the robotic voice thing is the most common for the ISTP personality. Okay. So I know it's typically attributed to INTPs, but okay. INTPs, like, they have extroverted intuition. So sometimes they mm -hmm. sound a little bit more, like, all over the place. And so when you're that scattered, you don't sound that robot-like. But I find the type most likely to get, mm -hmm. like, told they're a robot is the ISTP. Um, okay. Because it's the TI plus the NI. Like, so the TI is very robotic and, like, logical. Mm -hmm. And the NI is very linear. So when you have okay. a logical plus linear, it, it increases the robot. Okay. But a robot can be a good thing, too, because it's like mm -hmm. this level-headedness in a sea of irrational, in irrationality, which is why yeah. it's easy to kind of get upset and almost infuriated at the amount of irrationality around you, because it's like, wow, everyone's just kind of, they have... Um, inconsistent in like contradictory thoughts and they make no sense and mm -hmm. when you try to tell them something to to cure to give them the antidote to their bad thinking they don't take it yeah and so yeah but it's i appreciate and respect your ti for that reason okay so i wonder if there's a like amount of stps into djing i know like a few estps into djing too and i was like huh interesting Hmm. trend question mark <laughs> yeah uh i mean like uh i didn't intend to get into D djing and it wasn't exactly something that interested me just because even uh growing up kind of like i saw uh like some of my friends who were in the 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 kind of like you know doing music dur during lunch hour uh like it never really interested me but it's just kind of like it became more kind of like i had a goal and I wanted to promote, and that was like the the thing to do. So, uh huh, which is awesome. I'd love to hear your music. So, in okay. over email, feel free to send me links if you want. Okay, for sure. If I'm yep. being too prying to go, like Joyce, you're, you're prying too much. That's okay. No, uh, um, I'll definitely uh, sh share uh, links. For sure, yeah. Um, and I'll send you an ISTP report and a few websites of ISTP descriptions that might be cool to read. Of course, okay. like there's not enough ISTP representation out there, so you're gonna read profiles of ISTPs that are way too extroverted, sensing heavy. So they're mm -hmm. gonna sound almost ESTP like. So okay. don't mind that. You're that's gonna be a little bit of a bias online. Okay. Um, but I'm quite confident. I think the whole time you were quite ISTP. There was like no other type I really had in mind. I was going between mm -hmm. ISTP and ISTJ at the beginning because okay. you scored that on, on the test that I gave you. But okay. everything you said pointed towards ISTP. So I had no doubt it was just one type. Um, yeah, everything Denzel said was spot on. And so I don't have anything to add. Yeah. But and I can't- You don't have access to the test that she uh that she had so the test results she was like looking at and everything like when we do these sessions i don't mm -hmm. see them um okay. and so that further like helps with like you know double checking like any biases mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. both came to the results of istp then i'm pretty like confident on that yeah uh, okay. yeah Denzel yeah. went in blind and he still got to ISTP and I got okay. to ISTP. So yeah, you actually cool. remind me of my brother-in-law. So okay. <laughs> He's an ISTP and yeah, the, the cadence and how you speak and just the general energy, like yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I can send you the the link to the Toronto uh, MBTI meetups. It's called Toronto okay. Intuitives, but just ignore okay. it. Just come in and you'll yeah. be the famous person. So ISTPs are famous in MBTI groups because we never see them. So you're okay. gonna yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of all the personality types, apparently, ISTPs are the least likely of all 16 to actually get interested in um, personality typology. Huh? So that's okay. a pretty big deal. And yeah, and actually, final question, you mm -hmm. feel free to decline. But on my channel, sometimes I like to showcase like a profiling session for people to okay. watch. 
and yep. just like see like how it's conducted and then also see like a good example like they can guess like oh i think this person's an intj and then at the end and they're like mm -hmm. oh this guy is an istp but he reminds me so mm -hmm. much, so much of my intj friend unless mm -hmm. if my friend is actually an istp <laughs> And then, you know, it starts to, like, refine a lot of things. Would you be okay. comfortable with uh, me posting this recording of this session? Yeah. Right now? Awesome. Yeah, sure. Cool. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah. yeah. With ice TPs, they often mistype as INTP and INTJ really, mm -hmm. really, really, really often. More yeah. often than they type out as ISTP, actually. Okay. So this is, like, a good example. I thought you were very clear ISTP. I was, like, I had no other yeah. type in mind. It's like, uh, one thing that I did was uh, personality junkies, uh, INTJ, INTP type clarifier. Uh, I was 57% INTP. So I think maybe because of the fact that it was in the middle, like it kind of made sense to me that maybe something uh, like I was clearly not either and I was something else. Mm -hmm. So, so I, it's, it's kind of interesting that, that, uh, that kind of like when, uh, like the thing that had, that I related with uh, Mara was her thing saying that uh, sometimes she didn't necessarily care about some of of the uh, can't uh, um, can't uh, I remember specifically what she said, but uh, there was something very specific that that I I related with, and if ever I, I find it, I'll I'll uh, I'll tell you which uh, what it is. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to know. Something ISTPs share with INTPs mm -hmm. is a lone wolf quality. So sometimes yeah. it can be easier to be a lone wolf when you lead with an introverted judging process because mm -hmm. you're not everyone's cup of tea sometimes. Yeah. And so sometimes that idiosyncratic individualistic outlook onto life or your how you view and, and vet things maybe mm -hmm. different than other people so it can be a little taxing to get along with the group and so mm -hmm. sometimes i notice istps have a very small social circle and i think that that's like quite interesting of yeah. fe in the last lot i noticed mm -hmm. some like infps and isfps some of them can have that too but it's mostly the ti doms that have this situation okay. um i wonder where it comes from <laughs> okay. yeah i just thought that i would point that out and not really sure where I was going with that. Um, one of the things that I thought was pretty ISTP too is that you stumble into the things in your life. You're like, oh, DJing. Or, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, huh, that's like taking life day by day a bit. And I would expect yeah. more from a TI dominant type than an INTJ. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. just a little bit chaotic for an INTJ. Okay. <laughs> I think ISTP is the right type. Cool. Yeah. Uh it makes a lot of sense to me. So cool. Well, yeah, yeah. You're a pleasure to talk to. You're a com computer fun fun. I don't know what word you could get, fun at, but like a connoisseur. <laughs> That's what. You yeah, just, like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just call myself a computer nerd. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very yeah. simple. Yeah, it's, it's great. Your tech your tech bill is really low because you can fix all of your tech issues. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a computer Batman. So if anyone yeah. kind of needs help with their computer, they'll like send out their back signal, like, please, Eric, help us. Yeah. <laughs> you have the skill that can help the masses. Yes, you are just so unbelievably adorable. <laughs> it's like a, a... ICP is also my favorite type, too. And yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you, Eric. Yeah, it was nice was talking with you, Eric. Take care. I'll yep. send you the report. Take care of yourself. And, I'll, yep. yeah. and also, uh, you have a coaching session too, so feel free to book yep. that whenever you want. Yeah. Okay. We'll cool. Then. Bye. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay. Cheers. Hey, I just wanted to briefly thank you for taking the time to watch this video, whether it was on regular speed or two times speed whatever it was just thank you for consuming the content and around me you should be able to see a few little button 
designs and logos for other recommended videos because you know I make good content and new ones but then I also have some really good old content too that you should probably check out um, but make sure that if you really like this video um, feel free to subscribe to share um, it really helps this humble channel to expand and reach more people and ultimately help more people so once again thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day